order. This special council meeting is convened by electronic means as authorized under Part 14 of the Procedure Bylaw and the Vancouver Charter. This special council meeting has been called to consider support for small business recovery by enabling restaurants, wineries, distilleries, and private property, enacting a bylaw to waive permit fees for temporary uh, patios, and enabling increased capacity at <clears throat> liquor primary establishments. Uh, before we begin, I want to acknowledge that we're on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Slavoj. Nations. We thank them for having care for these lands and look forward to working with them in partnership as we continue to build this great city together. I also want to take a moment to recognize the immense contributions of the City of Vancouver's staff who work hard every day to help make our city an incredible place to live, work, and play, and especially want to thank them for their work uh, today in preparation for this special council meeting. I know we're moving things along quickly and we're having some success, but this should also help if uh, council agrees with the recommendations. Okay, we'll call, please. Yes, Mayor Stewart in the chair. Councillor Carr? Here. Councillor DiGenova? Present. Councillor Clerk? Councillor Fry? Councillor Fry? Oh, sorry. Present. Counsel Councillor Swanson? Here. Councillor Hardwick? Present. Councillor Weep? Present. Councillor Boyle? <laughs> Present. Councillor Dominato? Here. Councillor Bly? Present. And Councillor Kirby Young? Present. The meeting has quorum, Mayor Stewart. Thanks very much. Uh, the public is strongly, uh, strongly urged to listen to the proceedings via the city's website and to follow along on Twitter at Van City Clerk for updates on the progress of the meeting. Any comments on agenda items can be sent to council using the web form on the city's website, and the link to that form will be tweeted out on at Van City Clerk. Our business for this special council meeting is to receive one presentation and consider the, the related referral report, two bylaws, and one motion, and all, re, all related to temporary patios. Um, so item one is a referral report with a presentation, and we'll start the presentation. And here to present, we have uh, Jesse Adcock, uh, the GM of bu uh, Building and Licensing, Gil Kelly, the GM of Planning, and uh, Margaret uh, Whitkins from uh, the Acting Deputy GM of Engineering. So uh, when, whenever uh, ready, please go ahead. And then following that staff there, uh, uh, sorry, Council, any questions you'll have, uh, please put yourself on the list and uh, you'll have up to five minutes uh, for the first round of questions. So Mr. Mayor, thanks very much. And I'll turn it over to staff now. Mr. Mayor, yes. this is Sadu, um, City Manager. Just wanted to uh, the the PowerPoint that we're going to share will cover all of the um, all of the reports for today. Just to give an overview of what we're proposing to do, and uh, I'll hand it over to Jesse. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, sure, be, I guess we're weeks. I'll be call, calling a conflict on three and four. Is it advised that I watch the complete presentation and be part of the decision discussion? Under the bylaw, you yourself uh, from any discussion, um, but the clerk could refresh us on the process of conflict for Councillor Weeb. I believe what you do is state uh, why you'll be removing yourself from the meeting and the vote uh, it, that you will be, and then the reasons why. That is, um... I'll be, yeah, I'll be for item three because I have remuneration because I do have a patio. Um, for the restaurant that I have an ownership stake in, and then number four, because I have an ownership stake in a liquor primary at the Portside Pod in Gaston. Okay, thanks. And just over to the clerk, is that uh, is that all that's required for the uh, statement of conflict? Yes, Chair um, Stewart, that is correct. Right, and uh, 
And at this point, does the councillor have to recuse himself from the entire discussion as well as the vote? It's the clerk here. Yes, Mayor Stewart, um, it should be the entire agenda item. Okay. Uh, thank you, Councillor Weeb. Then, so we'll uh, we'll just get you to sign off uh, and pretend, for example, that you're you know exiting the room if we were in a, a physical space. So, uh, thanks very much for disclosing that, and uh, we'll move on to the staff presentation. Great, thank you. Um, can I just get a confirmation that my slides and um, sound are coming through okay? Yes, absolutely. I can see the slides and hear you well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so I'm here today with my colleagues from um, PDS Engineering, uh, DBL, including our Chief License Inspector. Uh, we're here to provide um, a further, I guess, um, evolution of the temporary patio uh, program, um, as well as bring forward uh, a few um, decisions for your consideration. I'll be opening up with a bit of an um, opening introduction just for context, um, sharing also an update on uh, public health order uh, that was received this morning. Um, Margaret will then take us through um, some changes uh, that we need to make to waive fees for our temporary patio program. Um, and then construction and planning will um, be talking to a referral report um, regarding amendments to allow temporarily uh, for the use of or for the allowance of patios on private property. So just um, starting with this image, this is uh, the same image that we brought to you at the special council meeting on May 27th. Uh, you may recall at that time that we had um, the boxes that you see here in, in yellow slash orange. Um, that was the subject of the May 27th meeting and that um, was the initial uh, phase one um, uh, launch of our temporary accredited public patio program. Um, what we're talking about today is the boxes that you'll be seeing uh, in blue and green. Um, so we have done further analysis and further development of the program and we're very pleased to share that we've um, developed solutions to allow for uh, an increased amount of applications to come through with respect to patios, outdoor patios on private property, um, as well as a solution for those with manufacturer licenses, uh, notably breweries, wineries, and distilleries. Um, that said, the, the boxes that are grayed out uh, don't mean that we are not um, working on those. In parallel, we are also um, continuing to prioritize those applications um, and, and subject matter related to those items um, and allocating additional staff and focus um, to normal DP, DP processes um, on private property. So um, with that, uh, we received this afternoon about two hours ago, um, an update from the provincial health officer with respect to uh, food service establishment and liquor services. Um, a new order was posted today, um, dated June 10th, uh, 2020. And in summary, what it does is it removes the blanket restriction for operators to uh, cap out at 50% of their occupancy. Um, instead, um, it has been replaced with a requirement to update their safety plans um, with an assessment of how many, um, how many patrons and staff they can accommodate um, with um, taking into account safe distancing. And so the Revised order contains a number of guidelines uh, for maintaining these safe distances, both within um, the area of service for our patrons uh, and also some guidelines with respect to um, staff, uh, you know, staff locations within the establishment. There's also some guidance provided uh, regarding events of over 50 people uh, held at these establishments. And so uh, we, as we had just received that information, staff are reviewing it. Um, but the great news is, is that should enable our um, food service establishment and liquor service establishments to continue to expand the number of patrons that they can offer service to. Um, 
So I'm going to pass over to Margaret now to talk through the um, amendments uh, on fees. Uh, great, thank you, Jesse uh, and Mayor and Council. And maybe I'll just pause to make sure the audio is working okay. Can we hear you fine? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, and next slide, Jesse. Thanks. Um, so uh, since we're getting near the end of our, our second uh, full week of the temporary expedited patio program, um, we did want to just take uh, a couple moments to provide a short update on how things have been going so far. Um, so on the slide that you're looking at, uh, it's showing the temporary patio applications uh, on public property um, that uh, we've received since the June 1st launch. Uh, and I'll, I'll say that things are definitely moving fast. So the numbers that you're seeing uh, have probably changed since uh, these ones were put in uh, a couple of hours ago. Um, uh, when they were put in a couple of hours ago, the total applications received was at 80. Uh, and uh, of those, 16 had just been received within the prior two business days, and so we're still in that uh, review process. Um, we have been able to approve 34 patios so far uh, since the June 1st launch. Uh, and then uh, uh, we've seen um, 30 cases where the application could not be approved uh, as proposed. Uh, so that's reflected in the bar labeled uh, reapplied or denied. Um, so for example, uh, there might be a conflict with a transit stop, uh, a fire hydrant, uh, or uh, we've seen cases where some of the accessibility requirements for sidewalk circulation have not been met. Um, so in those cases, we reach out to the applicant uh, to explore what potential changes or alternatives might uh, result in a successful application. And so in some cases, that will yield uh, a reapplication. Uh, and then there are some times where no alternative has been identified, um, which accounts for uh, nine of those 30 cases shown there. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so this map shows uh, the patios that have been approved um, as of, uh, of uh, today. Um, and this also includes those patios approved since the June 1st launch uh, on uh, private property. So this is both public and private as part of kind of our, our expedited and prioritized efforts. Um, so that is the 34 mentioned on public as well as approximately five on private land. Um, although private patios, uh, as you know, were part of the expedited program um, at initial launch and is something that will be brought on later this month, uh, we are still working uh, to move those through the process as quickly as possible. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, we've been really excited to see how quickly these patios have been rolling out and, and uh, just in immediate take up by the public. It's, it's really fulfilling to see how quickly uh, things can come to fruition. Uh, and there have been some really great examples of, of light and fast implementation um, that can still be aesthetic and functional. So, so this has been, um, you know, a really great thing for uh, us to, to um, uh, help enable and, and, and see um, kind of materialized benefit um, so quickly. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so with that as kind of a, a basic update, it brings uh, us to the three decision items for today. Um, I'll speak to the first two, um, uh, a new bylaw to waive fees for temporary patios until October 31st, uh, and then uh, just a minor uh, almost housekeeping amendment to the street vending bylaw, uh, and then uh, planning, our colleagues in, in uh, planning will speak to a referral report to address patios on private property. Um, and so as Jesse um, uh, may have noted, uh, the order uh, of this presentation is, is uh, reverse to what was shown in the agenda package, but um, was kind of designed to, to help with the, the flow. Hopefully it's uh, uh, still easy to, to follow. Um, so I'll just uh, briefly walk through these decisions on the next uh, couple of slides. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so the first decision I'll touch on um, relates to the direction that council gave to staff on May 27th which was to develop a bylaw to waive fees associated with the temporary expedited patio program uh, until October 31st. Um, so today we're bringing forward uh, the bylaw that responds to that direction um, to enact uh, the bylaw to enact a, a, a new temporary patio and street vending fees bylaw. Um, and this bylaw addresses patios on both private and public land uh, by waiving fees for patios in uh, the zoning and development uh, and building bylaws, uh, as well as the fees in the street vending bylaw um, on, a, on a temporary basis uh, with, with the October 31st expiration date. Uh, 
Um, and uh, worth noting that, um, you know, as we've been uh, in discussion with BIA and other community partners on, on COVID recovery, um, we have heard some interest in other innovative temporary uses of, of public spaces that would typically fall within the street vending bylaw. Um, so an example would be, you know, a fitness class in a temporary side street plaza. Um, uh, and so this temporary bylaw um, would position us to be able to respond to those types of ideas as they come in as well. Uh, we don't have any uh, specific proposal at this point, but but it's uh, um, you know is uh, sort of, uh, um, uh, provides kind of an, uh, an option going forward. Uh, the second decision uh, to touch on uh, is uh, just a minor amendment to the street vending bylaw, uh, which would allow more flexible permitting of small patios. Um, the so small patios uh, are uh, what we call kind of freestanding tables and chairs that are in front of businesses, um, so no platform railing, um, and the chairs are taken in each evening. And right now, our street vending by law currently restricts small patios to food establishments. Um, so even before COVID, we had heard interest from other business types for tables and chairs um, outside of their business. So you, know, you can think of a barber who might want to have places for customers to wait outside. Um, this amendment would enable us to approve um, that type of application for tables and chairs um, for non-food establishments uh, on an ongoing basis. Um, and with that, uh, we'll go to the next slide and I'll hand it off to um, Chris Robertson in planning. Thank you, Mark. Uh, just a quick sound check. Can you hear me? Yes, your sound is good. Yes, we can. We can hear you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, Chris Robertson. I'm the Assistant Director of the Citywide and Regional Planning Group. Um, the Zoning and Development Amendments uh, bylaw um, in front of you to temporary, temporarily allow patios on private property uh, is seeking Council approval to refer the proposed draft bylaw to public hearing. Uh, if approved, the proposed amendments to the Zoning and Development Bylaw will temporarily allow outdoor patios on private properties where regulations currently do not allow them. The temporary amendments will be in place until October 31st. This date is aligned with the Provincial Temporary Expanded Service Area Authorization. As per the Vancouver Charter, amendments to the Zoning and Development Bylaw require a public hearing. The public hearing date is targeted for July 7th. If council approves the bylaw at public hearing, enactment could occur the same day, allowing the changes to come into effect on July 7th. As this is a referral report, staff today can only speak to points of technical clarity. If council has questions related to the specifics of the amendments, these questions can be directed to staff for future response at public hearing. Staff will continue to process applications for patios already under existing regulations and through the city's uh, temporary expedited patio program that Margaret has just spoken to. Uh, should council refer this item to public hearing, staff will immediately begin working with the businesses on inquiries for patios on private property that would be eligible under the proposed changes. This will assist expediting the processing after July 7th. A reminder that referral um, reports, uh, um, Council must not discuss the amendments uh, between now and the public hearing with uh, any members of the public. So with that, I'll pass it back to Jesse Adcock. Thank, thank you, Chris. Oops, I <laughs> keep dropping my share. Um, I think actually with that, we pass it back to the chair. I think uh, Merritt comes back to you. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, so we'll go to um, Clerk. Do we have any speakers on this at all? Sorry, yes, uh, there are no speakers, Mayor uh, Stewart, just for the last item on the agenda. Okay, great, thanks so much. Uh, so Councillor Kirby Young, we've got you on the list for questions to staff up to five minutes. Uh, whenever you're ready, I'll start your timer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thanks to staff for the work, really appreciate all of this. My first question on the referral report is just around um, any requirements that we have statutorily for timing, because I know that you said the, the target date is July 7th, and I know sometimes we have to provide notice, but I know we do have three other public hearing dates scheduled before that, June 23rd, 25th, and 30th, and I just wondered if there's an opportunity for it to come to an earlier date, given that time is so critical for survival of these businesses. Yeah. 
It's, it's Chris Robertson. I can speak to that. Yes, we did try to get this to an earlier date. Um, uh, working with legal services, we have confirmed that the earliest uh, date is the July 7th date, um, uh, mostly because of the uh, um, advertising and notification requirements. Okay, so is it is it a specifically a four week requirement then, or over three weeks? No, if if there was one that landed, it, it's generally a two week requirement. But if there was a, a a meeting that landed between the 25th and the 7th, um, that would be workable uh, once we met that two week requirement. Councillor Kirby Young, did you have other questions? Perhaps we've lost Councillor Kirby Young. Just in, in that vein, uh, perhaps I could just, I'll freeze uh, Councillor Kirby Young's time, but just to add clarification from staff, could we, uh, is there any way to call a special public hearing meeting or something? Uh, um, um, it's Chris Robertson again. I'm wondering yes. if uh, anybody from legal is on the line. I don't know what's happened. Uh, I believe Kirby Ian Dixon is on the line. I'm still here, Mr. Mayor. Can you hear me? Oh, I can't hear you now. Sorry, uh, you, uh, we okay. lost you. Uh, so yeah. I'll just start your timer if you want to continue. Yeah, no problem. Um, I just disconnected the other session, so I'm just on audio. Um, so, yeah, my question was, is there a way to come? There is a reserve date scheduled for June 30th, for example, which would be in an extra week of time. I'm wondering, is there any way to come to an earlier date? If Council passes this report, can staff do their best to work to a specific date, or would it require an amendment in terms of getting it to an earlier date if that was possible? Again, I think, I'd, can I defer to law on that? Is yeah. Ian or? Ian, do you want to jump in? Uh, yeah, I'm not. Um, uh, I'm, I'm the um, the situation with um, with public hearing dates. I think if there's an available date and we can uh, meet the meet the advertising requirements, then yes, we could we could move it forward. Okay, and count, that wouldn't require council to provide any direction on that. What we could move this report and staff could work towards an earlier date. Is that right, or does it require any amendment of this report? I don't believe it, we need any amendment of this. Well, we are we refer, we'd be referring it to a specific date, so I think we would need to have that date. Okay, um, I'll be guided by them, but I'd be happy to move an amendment if, um, later if legal could provide language. Um, can I carry on quickly with other questions? Um, my technical question is just in terms of designating other spaces, so just for clarification, the referral report does re require refer to things that would incorporate things like retail. I notice it mentions things like cabaret, et cetera. So any of those types of businesses would have the opportunity to utilize space, is that right? That's correct, and it would only be for those that that actually need it. There are certain uses that are are permitted. There's the, the clause in the the zoning and development bylaw is uh, that requires uh, uses to be contained wholly within the building. Doesn't apply universally across the district schedule. So it would only be for those that uh, that clause ap applied to. But yes, they would be. Available. So for greater clarity, just understand the technicality of what's being referred. If a retailer wants to have a sidewalk display, would that be covered under this referral report as written? Yes, provided it met the development permit application requirements. Okay, thanks. I'm gonna save the rest of my time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're on to uh, Councillor Dominato for up to five minutes. Please go ahead, Councillor Dominato. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. And similarly, my question's around timing, and I, I just wanted to get clarity. Um, the reference to two weeks, is that a statutory requirement in the Vancouver Charter, or is that policy, or is it a regulation? The, it's Ian Dixon here. The, um, the, the two-week requirement is statutory, uh, but I have been advised that we can, that we don't, you don't need to set the date for, the, for, for an earlier hearing, that we can schedule that, but if you advise that, that you want it to come as quickly as possible, but there is, a, the two weeks is a statutory requirement. Okay, and so I yeah, and, counsel, and I, bet. I can jump in. Um, the we do have a um, we do have some other dates. Um, we had tentatively scheduled other topics in them, but I imagine we can squeeze this one in. So we'll move this as soon as we can once we've met the two week threshold, likely June thirtieth. Okay, thank you for that. And I guess the follow up to that was actually is whether uh, council has any uh, uh, ability to waive the two week requirement. And that's why I was asking if it was in the charter or if it was regulatory or policy, if there was any ability for us to waive that. 
I can answer that. It's the index again. No, there's no ability to waive that. Okay. Uh, thank you for clarifying that. I'm drilling down a bit. Um, and just uh, if I could just get comment from staff about um, we. Do I understand correctly from the report we're not waiving the $385 development permit? Is that correct uh, for private property? No, we are waiving that. Oh, we are. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's in that's in the uh, the the bylaw that you're approving today. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, okay, that's it for now. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. I'm just having some adjustments made to my panel, but I believe it's Councillor Dejanova next on the queue. Uh, please go ahead, Councillor Dejanova. Thanks so much, uh, Mayor Stewart. Yes, I I was thinking maybe some adjustments might be needed to the panel there. Um, just wanted to ask staff about consultation with the Persons with Disabilities Advisory Committee and if they'd have a chance to, you know, even just if there wasn't formal communication, because I understand it's not like they could move a motion or I'm not sure when their meetings are scheduled. Um, I know that there has been some talk about accessibility. I uh, just wanted to to ask uh, through through you to staff if if there's been any consideration of reaching out specifically uh, to that committee to you know share details or answer questions. So this is um, Margaret uh, from Engineering, and uh, others, uh, other staff may have uh, uh, things to layer in on this as well. But uh, specifically on the kind of, um, public space and patio initiatives um, uh, that that uh, we've been advancing, including the the mobility and, and slow street component, uh, there is there are some staff that are going to that committee uh, this evening. Um, uh, and so there will be some engagement uh, with uh, with them uh, through that opportunity. Uh, and then uh, accessibility has been one of the key criteria through which we've been evaluating. And so if, if there is feedback that comes through the engagement this evening, we would happily incorporate that as part of um, our review process uh, going forward. Okay. That, that's, uh, I'm very happy to hear that. I'm uh, also wondering about the seniors. Advisory committee, will there be an opportunity to uh, work with them as we move forward? Um, so again, speaking about the the kind of suite of public space and mobility initiatives uh, uh, that that the patio initiative aligns with, uh, some staff uh, did meet with uh, the seniors uh, advisory committee last week. Okay, that's that's helpful. And and did they have any feedback that was incorporated into the recommendations or? Uh, the, the direction that staff is, is moving forward in. Thank you. I'll just defer to Lisa Parker here, the branch manager of street activities who was uh, participating in that discussion. Hi, thank you. We had a, um, an initial discussion presenting really the, the full suite, as Margaret mentioned, of, of the opportunities within the public realm. Um, we definitely discussed the importance of seniors as far as one of the one of our most vulnerable with um, you know, risk of exposure, but also just the, the impacts from social isolation. So we were talking about ways to work together as we do start to move into more specific projects. Um, and there was a discussion around continuing to work together and potential for even like a um, physically distance appropriate site visit together just to kind of see what kind of obstacles they may be experiencing and see how we can ensure that we incorporate that in the design. That's great. Those are my questions. Thanks very much. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Council. Um, I think that's it for questions. So uh, we have no. Oh, Councillor Kirby Young, you've got a minute and a half. I was just going to say I'm happy to move the report, Mr. Mayor, if we're concluded. Questions of great. Staff. Second. Great. Thanks very much. Councillor okay. Kishinoba. Okay. So we can. So this is uh, we're moving the referral and uh, report number one uh, zoning and development uh, bylaw amendments to allow temporary patios. Uh, so we're going to move into debate on this matter and we do have to do the bylaws, uh, separately. So we'll, we'll do this, uh, this item first. And if there's any, uh, I'm just going to reset the timers here. So Councillor Kirby Young, you've moved it. So do you have anything you'd like to state on this? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll be, um, careful because I know this is a referral report, but I do want to thank staff for moving quickly on this work. Um, and I am really hopeful. I just want to emphasize in terms of timing that we can get back to an earlier public hearing, whether it's potentially the June 30th date was mentioned, or even optimistically, I say, um, the 25th, which is two weeks from now. I know that would probably be tight um, with the requirement, but I, I, I share that just in the spirit of all the feedback and the ongoing discussions I'm having 
um, with operators and the one theme that comes up so often other than how creative they're being to try to survive and make a go of it is how much time matters. Um, and I think we saw that with, um, for example, exa um, examples in the news such as Como Taferia who were open for a week um, and then closed down without having uh, their patio all sorted out yet because they couldn't make a go of it without that additional space. Um, and so it's at the end of the day, I always think, why are we doing something? It's because it really will help these businesses survive and the, the time makes a difference. So um, I appreciate staff taking that feedback to heart and seeing if we can get to an earlier public hearing and also sort of facilitating the work in the meantime so that as soon as the legalities are taken care of, if, if and when this is passed, uh, that future public hearing date, um, that we'll be able to move as quickly as we can and, and have those businesses be able to be up and running. So I, I just want to say thanks for the work and, and I think this is responding to what we're hearing from the community and people are very excited as well about not only the use of private space but also um, the idea of having brewery patios for the very first time um, in the city of Vancouver. So I think that this is some good coming out of the, the silver lining out of the COVID cloud, if you will. So that's it for me, thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Dejanova, up to five minutes. Uh, um, no, I was, that was a holdover. I was on to second it. Okay. I'm very supportive and I will be supporting it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Great, thanks very much. I'll call for a vote then from the clerks. If you could uh, fire up the voting machine there. You could also uh, mark Councillor Weeb as uh, declared, uh, declared. A, is it do you mark him declared a, con a conflict or absence? Councillor Dejanova, we still need to vote from you. Great. Okay, that has passed unanimously. Thank you very much, Council. Moving on to our next item, uh, we have. Uh, Two bylaws on the agenda for consideration by council. Does any member wish to hold bylaw one or two for debate, separate vote, or for a conflict of interest? And I'm just going to initiate my panel here. Does anybody want to hold either of these these bylaws? If so, put yourself on the panel. I don't see anybody on the panel. So would somebody like to move the adoption of bylaws two? And Thank you very much. Second. Councillor Dejanova seconded by Councillor Kirby yeah. Young. Yes, and uh, I'm just going to the, if anybody would like to speak to this or debate them, now's the time to put yourself on the queue. I don't see anybody, so I'm gonna call yeas and nays. Uh, all in favor of these two bylaws say yay. 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 Opposed say nay. Thank you very much, Council. Those two bylaws have been passed, and the uh, list of approved bylaws can be found on the city website. Uh, now um, we're moving to the motion that I've introduced, so I'm going to uh, turn the chair over to uh, Councillor Dejanova, who's serving as Deputy Mayor this month. Thanks so much. Um, Mayor Stewart, just before you introduce your motion, uh, I wanted to uh, make sure that the the clerks uh, were able to notify uh, Councillor Weep uh, that, that the items are over that he um, had declared a conflict on if he'd like to rejoin the meeting. Uh, uh, a reminder for the mayor that you'll have two minutes, uh, or the mayor will have two minutes to introduce his motion and council will have one minute each to ask any clarifying questions. Um, item four is a motion in, uh, entitled expanding occupant load capacity of liquor primary establishments and other assembly uses to support COVID economy recovery, which is to be moved by Mayor Stewart. Um, Mayor Stewart, would you like to uh, uh, put yourself on the queue? To I'm sorry, um, um, uh, if I might um, chair just to, I think um, Councillor Weeb had indicated that he had a conflict for this item as well. So I just wanted oh. to clarify that. Thank you. I'm, That's my I, recollection. Yeah. I did not hear that. Uh, so then, if the clerk could please mark that down, I just wanted to make sure we uh, we had participation from everyone who wanted to be a part of this. Thank you. Y yes. Uh, Thank you. Uh, pardon the interruption, Chair DiGenova. I just want to confirm that is correct. Okay, thank you very much. My apologies. I thought it was just on item one, uh, two, and three. So, uh, 
Uh, Mayor Stewart, if you'd like to put yourself uh, on the queue or perhaps the, the clerk could help with that, uh, then we will begin. Uh, you'll have two minutes to introduce your motion. Great, thanks so much. Uh, I come up as you on the queue, but I hope you don't mind, but I think that probably uh, uh, serves the same purpose. Okay, so, yeah. right. So uh, the motion I'm introducing here today is in the spirit of the ones we've just passed that uh, the council directs staff to prepare the necessary f fire bylaw amendment to enable liquor primary establishments and other uh, uses to expand their occupant load to capacity. And I can uh, just explain this quickly is that there is a, a provincial law regarding capacity and then there's a city of Vancouver law regarding capacity. Uh, and um, uh, basically in a nutshell, the, the city of Vancouver law is more restrictive than the provincial law. So if you have a building that has a, you know, could under the provincial law would have a hundred uh, people person capacity, uh, then uh, under the city law though, it would be 80 or 90 people. So that's a, a dramatically reduced uh, or dramatically reduced if you're business, because you think about how much turnover those uh, missing seats provide. So this uh, this would be uh, preparing a bylaw so that we would just match the provincial standards. I did have a, a, a good conversation with the chief about this. Uh, this by, our bylaw was in place, from my understanding, mainly to do with uh, old sprinkler codes and things, which have all been adjusted. So uh, in the preparation of the bylaw, that, that information will be provided to council. But um, we, I do. This was a primary ask of uh, a roundtable I had with uh, establishment owners, and uh, so that's why I'm bringing it forward for your consideration today. Uh, that we can, you know, do everything we can to help the small businesses succeed, especially those uh, that are in, in this uh, segment of, of the industry. So I ask for your support, Council, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks, Mayor Stewart. You're under time there. And council, um, as per our process and the procedure bylaw, um, each council member has a minute, uh, if they wish, to have their questions, um, to ask their questions and have them answered by Mayor Stewart. So uh, I'll just give everyone a, a quick moment. Please put yourself on the queue if you do have any questions for Mayor Stewart about this motion. Okay, uh, if anyone's having trouble, uh, oh, Councillor Dominato, uh, I'll ask the, the clerk to start your clock here. Uh, go go um, ahead, Councillor Dominato. Uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Um, uh, yeah, question through you to the mayor is just uh, the sector's been asking for this for quite some time, and I had understood there was a number of uh, barriers for doing this, and that's why. Uh, this change hasn't been implemented. So I'm just curious, you mentioned the discussions with the fire, but um, I'm just curious if there were other reasons why uh, this change wasn't made previously and only now during the pandemic. Uh, from my perspective, uh, you know, we've been talking about this really since early sp in the spring, I think, and then COVID hit. So that's at least when it came to my attention. And so this is why Moving it now, I do know there's provincial hurdles also to cross, but but this also this gets us out of the way, and I think that's the that's the key thing. So we will be having discussions uh, with the with the province, but if we do go ahead with this, then then it will mean that uh, at least our work is done, and then uh, we'll still need some some more assistance from the province, which is not a charter change or anything. And my understanding is these are simple things that can be done um, by the attorney general's office. And that. A minute. Oh, do I get a yeah, it's, No. It's okay. just a it's just a minute per Thank you. person and I don't see anyone else on the queue. Um would someone like to oh, Councillor Kirby on? You have questions for Mayor Stewart? Yeah, um a, a quick one. Um I'll ask uh, the clerk to start your clock there. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh yeah, a quick one. So you mentioned in terms of our capacity being lower, Mr. Mayor. Can you any yes. quick chance to quantify that? Like, would that result, for example, in a 10% capacity increase for our businesses that it impacts, or five or 15? It could any be chance? even greater than that. Uh, the uh, the number I've been given from the a number of the the established owners I talked to was a 10% number, but I do believe it's greater in in other buildings. It would vary depending on the on the nature of the code, and that's what we would. Uh, 
discover through this uh, staff report and which will come back to us for uh, for a uh, approval. Okay, and just a clarification on on the on the second question, if I can. You said a staff report, but I don't see reference to the staff report. I see preparation of fire fire bylaw amendments. Can you clarify? Sure, they'll dig into this as they're uh, preparing the amendments, and then we'd have another opportunity to ask them more detailed questions, just like the one you've asked here. Okay, um, thank you, and thank you, Madam Chair. That's it for me. I'm happy to move the motion if we're complete with questions. Well, Mayor, or second. Uh, I'm Mayor sorry. Stewart. I said, Motion, I said thanks second. so much. Second, okay. My apology. Thanks so much. Uh, you beat me to it. Uh, Councillor Kirby Young. So, Councillor Kirby Young is seconding the motion, and we have received requests to speak to this motion. Um, and I understand that we have uh, three speakers signed up, Council. Uh, before I begin, I'd just like to remind speakers that they have up to five minutes to make their comments. Uh, they should state whether they are in support or in opposition of the motion, and they may only speak once. Council members will then have up to three minutes each to ask questions to speakers. However, speakers are under no obligation to respond. Uh, following the last speaker on the speakers list, um, for each item, um, as per the pilot that we have uh, agreed on for the next few months, we will go over the speakers list uh, of who was not present earlier, and then we'll give those people who might have missed their opportunity uh, the chance to speak. And then after hearing uh, from speakers, we will go into discussion on the motion. Um, I'd also just like to, uh, to remind council members uh, that any amendments that you do submit uh, must be submitted to the clerk in final written form before the member introduces them. And please ensure the clerk has received your amendment before it's your turn to speak if possible. Uh, council, we have speakers who will be providing comments to council uh, by phone and a moderator will assist in patching the speakers through when their turn comes up. We will now hear speakers on this motion. All speakers um, will be I understand that there are some speakers that are here in person. Um, and the first speaker is Laura Balance. Uh, and uh, I understand uh, the organization uh, that uh, Laura Balance is here on behalf of is uh, as the spokesperson for Hospitality uh, Vancouver Association. And Good. I understand you're speaking in person. That's correct. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor and Council, and thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you about today's motion. My name is Laura Balance, and I am a spokesperson for the Hospitality Vancouver Association, an organization that represents bars, pubs, restaurants, retailers, and nightclubs in our city. We are here in support of today's motion. Together, our businesses contribute in excess of three quarters of a billion dollars in economic impact into our city annually and employ over 10,000 people. We consider ourselves Vancouver's other nine to five economy and are beyond, and beyond contributing significantly to the economic health of Vancouver, we are impactful contributors to the cultural health of our city as well. Our members would like to acknowledge and commend the mayor for reaching out to our organization early in the COVID crisis to ask what City Hall could, to, could do to better support our businesses during this incredibly difficult time. It is through the dialogue that followed with the mayor and senior staff that we were able to articulate and outline ideas of how to improve old, outdated, and punitive policies that have made the viability of this sector specifically in, within the city of Vancouver unreasonably tough. Our members have been advocating for a common sense change to occupancy and distancing limited, limits for more than two decades, and we are incredibly thankful for this motion before Council today. Specific to that motion, I, on behalf of Vancouver's nighttime economy sector, urge Council to vote in favour of updating a policy that not only has been out of date for the past 25 years, but also unfairly disadvantages Vancouver-based business owners as the rest of the province follows its own occupancy and distancing requirements instead of the nationally respected BC Building Code and Fire Code. The motion, if approved today by Council, brings Vancouver in line with the rest of the province, not in front of, but parallel to the rest of British Columbia. And this is long overdue. Approval of this motion will allow businesses to have long-term viability past this crisis, which is currently decimating our sector. Our members are also clear that 
As with anything, the devil is in the details. I urge Council to implement this motion citywide. COVID has not impacted our sector by neighbourhood. It's decimated Vancouver's entire nighttime economy, from Granville Street to Yale Town to Gastown to Davie Village to Commercial Drive to Kitsilano to Main Street. And we are hopeful if this motion, if passed, will be applied as such. It is imperative that a level playing field related to occupancy, distancing, and moratorium areas is applied across the entire city. Finally, the occupancy and distancing moratorium area protocols in Vancouver have negatively impacted the nighttime economy of our city for more than two decades. COVID has brought our industry to a standstill and our businesses to their knees. It is no longer a matter of months or weeks, it's days or hours for many of them. Our own estimates say that we, if we can't get relief through common sense motions like the one in front of you today, 80 to 90% of our sector will never reopen. That is a minimum of eight to 9,000 Vancouver jobs lost and hundreds of millions of dollars of economic impact annually gone. Imagine the impact not only to our industry directly, but imagine our city without a nightlife and what that will do by extension to our tourism and creative economies, among others. We need this initiative to pass, we need it applied citywide, and we need it action quickly. We are hopeful that bringing Vancouver policies parallel to every community in the province will receive 100% support today around the council table, and we hope that the message our nighttime economy, the owners of these businesses, and the thousands of employees within it here today is that council has heard and is extending a lifeline that allows our businesses to see a light at the end of the tunnel that isn't a train, and because of that, they will hold on and fight on. I thank you for this opportunity on behalf of the members of HVA, and we hope that you will give it your consideration. And one final note, Mr. Mayor and Council, with respect to Councillor Dominato's very good question specific to why hasn't it come forward before, it is my humble opinion that there has been a, a lack of uh, attention and will specific to this because it makes no sense that you can simply cross a border into Burnaby, Coquitlam, Richmond, North Vancouver, or anywhere else in this province and have occupancy uh, and fire code applied and then Vancouver is severely disadvantaged. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, ha I don't see any questions for you, but very much appreciate you speaking, uh, coming to speak to council. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Uh, now, we'll just uh, need to take a moment, uh, Council, just in between speakers, uh, because the next speaker also is in person, I understand. That is correct, Chair DiGenova. If you could just Thank wait you. one minute. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll let the, uh, the clerk advise me as to when they're ready to proceed. Yes, it will be shortly. Chair De, De Genova will be ready in two moments You're ready? here. Okay. Yes. Okay. No worries. Thank you. I'll, I'll wait to hear from you. The speaker is just coming into the chamber. Okay, we're ready. Good afternoon. My name is Blaine Kelling, and I I'm understand. With oh, sorry, sorry. Um, 
I'm, I apologize. I was just going to introduce you. Uh, speaker number two is Blaine Culling, uh, and you are here in your capacity as the owner and president of the Roxy Nightclub. You'll have up to five minutes to speak to council, and there may be questions for you afterwards. I will ask. Uh, I will ask the clerk to start your timer now. Good afternoon, and uh, I want to thank very much uh, the mayor and each and every one of the council members here for um, acting so quickly and to deal with our uh, industry's issues. Uh, this is the one thing that for decades has been the most difficult and awkward situation in our uh, economic model of running a, a nightclub in the city of Vancouver. And we are so excited and so thankful that you are willing to uh, consider helping us in this instance. And I can tell you really and truly in this COVID situation, I've had discussions with other owners and at least three of them have told me that they're really considering not opening because it's so economically unviable to um, operate without this change. And uh, we, I want to appreciate it. I want to tell you th how much we appreciate it. We, it's really true. And um, the, um, I think you know the importance of the night industry. And it goes everywhere in, in Vancouver. As Laura has said, all of those things are very true. Um, I can remember Rick Hantonson saying to me, you know, Blaine, the second or third question that any person planning a convention in the city of Vancouver asks is, what's the nightlife like? Are my 500 doctors from you know, Kansas City or something, will they have fun when they go there? Will they enjoy Vancouver? And so it's really important. And you have no idea. We are literally on life support. So, I mean, you are wonderful to be considering this. And I absolutely urge uh, you to support the motion that's in front of you. I think that's enough. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I I see Councillor Kirby Young on the queue uh, with questions. So uh, you do not need to answer her question, or I should say, uh, you're under no obligation to answer uh, the questions of any council member. Uh, I'll leave that up to you, and I'll ask uh, the clerk to please start Councillor Kirby Young's timer for questions. Uh, now, please. Thank you. Councillor Kirby Young? Did yes, we I'm here. You? Go no, ahead. I'm here, ma I'm here, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Do you have oh, a okay. question? Go I ahead. Do. Hi, Mr. Colling. Um, can you hear me? Uh, not very well, but, but please go ahead. Okay. I'm turning up my mic. Is that better? Yes. Okay, um, I have a quick question for you, and it's and it triggered it for me when you mentioned um, Rick Antonson, a former president of Tourism Vancouver, who actually, funny story, hired me um, back in the day. But I'm curious when you mentioned how important it is to tourism in terms of having the vibrant economy or the vibrant nightlife. But in terms of economic recovery, um, how can you speak to how much or sort of what percentage of of business you think that people get from the tourism sector and versus how reliant you're going to be on the local economy and on council taking moves like this to shore up your ability to make the numbers work? Well, I think that uh, it in that instance, it might depend on where you are located in Vancouver. Certainly if you're on Davie Street or Granville Street or Yale Town or Gastown, easily accessible by most of, to, to most of the hotels in downtown Vancouver and close to the convention center, um, it a, has a big impact on it. Uh, you know, I don't know what I might say, 20 or 30 percent anyway, maybe more. Um, I think as you go out to some of the other, uh, whether it's Kitsilino or, or Main Street or, or Commercial Drive, I think they may well uh, not have the same uh, impact as the downtown area. Okay, but certainly it's, it's a key. It's but a key, but yeah. without a doubt, um, people do go, at, when they come to conventions, they're very willing to travel to any part of the city to experience something that they choose to go to. Okay, but having this additional potential or capacity and hopefully getting locals in could help partly mitigate the downturn that we're going to experience for some time in tourism. Would you say that's a fair fair thing to say? 
I'm sorry, I didn't hear you very well, but uh, I said I said having this additional capacity, um, you know, trying to make up some of that business, especially from locals, could help to mitigate in small part some of the tremendous impact we're going to see for some time due Abs to the uh, lack of tourism. Is that fair to say? Absolutely, this additional capacity is absolutely essential to a any kind of an economic model anywhere in the city. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Colleen. That's it for me. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Colleen. That's all the questions for you. Thank you. And I understand our next uh, speaker is on the phone, so there uh, is no need for a delay to uh, sanitize the podium. Uh, I'd, I'd ask the moderator if we have uh, speaker number three, uh, John, uh, Clarides on the phone, and I understand uh, he is the owner of Numbers Cabaret um, and the owner of Marquis Wine Cellars as well. That's correct. Can you hear me? Yes, and I will ask the clerk to start okay. your timer. You have uh, up to five minutes to speak to council, and there may be questions for you, so don't hang up just right away after speaking. Okay. Thanks so much. And I'll, start, I'll have them start your timer now. Thanks. Good, good, good afternoon. Thanks for allowing me the opportunity to speak to you today. My name is John Clarides. I'm the owner of Marquis Wine Cellars, <clears throat> which is on Davie Street, and I've owned Marquis since 1986. Um, I'm also the new owner of Numbers Cabaret at 1042 Davie Street, which is just next door. I'm here today to speak in favor of extending and enhancing the city's patio policy, specifically on private land, as the uh, current policy did not cover this aspect. My family has uh, continually owned and operated business uh, in the West End since 1958. Our first venture was in the corner of Robson and Thurlow. Joe Fortes is our parking lot, and the current entrance to the Camp Shoe store in the corner was our main entrance. Uh, we also had a second restaurant in the corner of Davy and Thurlow, where there is a, currently a Denny's. Um, we have a long history within the West End and uh, helping local communities. Uh, in the 1970s, Numbers was called a disco called Tony Lemmer's Factory. In 1980, Phil Moon purchased the club and turned it into a gay bar. It has been in continual operation and an in integral pillar of the gay community ever since. It, and it served, contributed to the West End neighborhood with great style and grace, and it's my intent to continue on Mr. Moon's legacy to the best of my ability. Uh, I'd like to bring your, also your attention that Numbers is directly next door to my wine shop, and I've never had any issue with any of Numbers' patrons leaving the club. And to the best of uh, my knowledge, Mr. Moon has never had any bylaw infractions. Conversely, Celebrities Nightclub, just three stores away, um, I've had my windows broken uh, countless times. So, uh, as we all know, COVID-19 uh, nightclubs can only operate if they serve some type of food. My architect and I were excited when we learned the city's uh, Tend to wanted to expand the patios program. We applied to have a patio in the back, and of course, with all the social distancing protocols in place. When we received our reply, we were dismayed to learn that the new rules did not apply to private property, and we had to go through the normal process. This will mo most likely take a year, cost tens of thousands of dollars, and will miss many critical summer miss critical summer business, and potentially this year and next year. The back of our parking lot is paved and gated. During Pride, Numbers receives a temporary patio license where there is a food truck. Capacity is approximately 176 people. And again, to the best of my knowledge, there's never been an issue or incident at Numbers during this celebration under these circumstances. After speaking with my architect, David Eaton, my vision for Numbers patio was strengthened. Sunny location would keep, keep warm during the day, absorbing the sun and the concrete and somewhat shaded by the building to the west. Uh, the intent would be to add a misting system to keep the patrons cool. He assured me the property is wide enough and will have enough uh, spaces for three parking spots and sufficient room for garbage and recycling. And an existing decorated, renovated, and uh, repainted iron gate will separate the parking from the patron uh, from the parking from patrons from the back alley. He also confirmed that there is ample room uh, to strictly abide by Coastal Health's latest requirements for staff and patrons alike. Um, after ample consideration, we discovered the most cost-effective way to, to adhere to the province's policy of serving food is to have a food truck in the back lot during Pride. Uh, Numbers is located on a house built in 1894, and installing any type of kitchen or HVAC would be an abhorrently expensive proposition. Essentially, it would not be worth the investment, and Numbers would have to close until restrictions are lifted for nightclubs, potentially putting 20 people out of work. Worst-case scenario, this could even lead to me tearing down the building and redeveloping it, which is not 
what my intent is. Being able to have an out-of-the-box made in BC solution to help small businesses is critical to the city, nightlife, and moreover, the gay community, which relies on numbers and a safe and accessible, fun place to patronize. Think how cool it would be to have Taco Fino, Roaming Dragon, or Vidges operating in the back. Uh, what would make this concept even more unique would be elegantly closed back lot, some type of greenery, greenery making it a cozy oasis right in the heart of the busy West End. My 35 years in the wine business would make it easy to compile and serve a tasty selection of wines, either by the bottle or glass, an assortment of far, smart, fresh cocktails, and of course a selection of uh, craft beers. And I've already engaged in one of Canada's top mixologists to create a cocktail program for me. And this effort would turn the numbers into something revitalized, rooted in Vancouver, history with pride, and unique to the area, so an upgraded place for the um, uh, gay community to go. Uh, and I would apply the same work ethic and methodology that has made Marquis Wine Cellar as BC's top private wine shop. And the example I bring you is in 1986 when I first opened. One of the writers for BC Business Magazine wrote that the wine store may not survive because it's located in the nether regions of Davie Street. Those of you old enough to remember what Davie Street was like in the 70s, 80s, it wasn't a pretty picture. And uh, it was uh, it was pretty ugly at the time. And... Uh, through hard work and dedication. And that is dedication. your time. Thank you. I'm Perfect. so sorry, but hang but, but It's okay. You do I'm, done. I'm done. Thank I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, from Councillor Kirby Young. Councillor Kirby Young, I'll ask the clerk to start your timer now up to three minutes for questions. Thanks, Madam Chair. Hi, Mr. Clertis. Um, Hello. Thanks for being here. So I'm correct Thank that you. yours is a little bit different because today we have, we are moving forward with steps to support private patios and, and certainly cabarets are named in that referral report earlier. Which we are, um, which we are. But, but um, you currently don't have a kitchen, is that right? And so that's Correct. the the need to try to move forward with, and given the provincial requirements or restrictions around cabarets, you're looking to add food service, is that correct? Correct, but with a food truck in the back. Okay, and this is something that you've done before, is that right, during Pride, for example, where you've done it through a special event license mechanism, so you're looking for Correct. some way the city can enable this on a on a longer term basis until Correct. nightclubs can operate yes. in a different yeah, way. Yeah, that would okay. that would be the, the 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 best result possible if we could have uh, a uh, a food truck in the back. Okay, and I wonder if you're able to share. Is there any inf um, sort of feedback or that you've gotten back from the province as it relates to food truck operation in your establishment? Uh, trying to piece I'm, together where I'm the city can help here or what you here. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't catch I said, that. I'm just trying to piece. I'm just trying to piece together here where the city can help and where the province has overlapped and what your experience has been there. I, I, I you know, I haven't, I haven't uh, uh, pursued that yet, so um, I'm not, I'm not quite sure yet. Okay. Hello? Great. I just want to clarify that. And hope. Yep. No, I just want to clarify that. Hopefully, our staff will be able to assist. Thank you. Okay. Is that all of your questions, Councillor Kirby? Yes, thank you very much. Thanks very much uh, to the speaker as well. Uh, and that's the last speaker, Council. Um, so, uh, is there any discussion on this motion? I'll just wait a moment to see if if councillors um, would like to put themselves, or sorry, council members uh, would like to put themselves on the queue at all and if you can't get on the queue I you can always call a point of privilege Just give you a moment Councillor Dominato I'll ask the clerk to start your timer up to five minutes uh, oh. on this to speak to this motion moved by Mayor Stewart uh, thanks, Madam Chair. I'll be brief in my comments in the interest of time. I um, uh, appreciate the the proposal and uh, motion coming forward. Uh, certainly, uh, do know from talking with the sector myself that this is something that they had been uh, lobbying for for quite some time, uh, and so it is a a, a welcome uh, change, and it does really um, level the playing field um, because we have been operating under different rules specifically in Vancouver and as we know uh, people travel across uh, the metro area to uh, enjoy themselves in our great cities and so uh, it is a it's a very practical change it's reasonable I appreciate that there is now support for that 
um, uh, and uh, both by uh, the fire department and staff, because I do know this is something that's been in, in conversation for quite some time. And so I'm happy to support the motion. Thanks very much. And uh, seeing no, no one else on the queue, I will call a vote on this. And I'll ask the clerk to bring up the voting panel. And to notify me when all of the votes are in. Chair Deeb Genova, the vote is concluded. Thank you. And I'll uh, ask the clerk to read out the results, Council, as I'm having some issues trying to bring up uh, the panel uh, from the chambers. Yes, Chair D. Genova, it is unanimous with Councillor Weeb in uh, declared conflict. Thank you very much. And now I will hand the chair back over to you, Mayor Stewart. Mayor Stewart? Sorry, I was just on mute there. Yeah, uh, no worries. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor De Genova. And I'm going to ask uh, if Councillor Hardwick would like to move a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'm so honored. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Mayor. I would love to make that motion. I just think your enthusiasm for adjournment is, uh, <laughs> is it makes my day. So uh, can I have a seconder on that one? Second, <laughs> Councillor DiGenova. Okay, and uh, all in favor say yay. 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 Oh, say nay. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Council. Really appreciate your indulgence today in this special council meeting, and we've done good work here. So, uh, talk to you again soon, and thanks very much to the clerks for all your work as well. Okay. But, okay thanks, everyone. Well. Thanks, Steph. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye.